So thanks so much. It is a pleasure to be at Iceland. It's my third visit here. It is an amazing place. There's so much going on here, a lot of, uh, so much success. And, and energy is so appropriate for that topic uh, of the conference. And I have to say, the timing for me could not be better. Dartmouth College, which is where I come from, it's actually Dartmouth College, um, it just received a $100 million gift to launch an energy institute. Um, and it's from Arthur L. Irving, Irving Oil, Irving Energy in the New England area. So very exciting time for the college because we're actually going to devote a lot of resources and time with the business school, the engineering school. So I did that Friday and here I am today talking to you about energy and wonderful conference, great lineup of speakers. So really looking forward uh, to all of that. The one thing, if you Google, you will find this, but you have to look a little bit. For the last 20 years, I have managed... Uh, marketed and an executive producer of the Australian rock band The Church, okay, who are in the Australian Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I'm proud to say, okay, so highly recommended, by the way. Um, thank you very much, <laughs> okay, so, all right, so, but what I want to do is I want to sort of set up the conference talking about branding, and what I want to give you is sort of five key um, things, okay, now I need my slides, So if I get the slides to go forward, where are we? Oh, there we go. So, okay, that's good. Thanks. So basically, I want to talk about five keys to uh, kind of uh, branding success in energy markets. So, um, and, and really trying to set up, I think, what you're going to hear a lot of different people talk about in different ways. So I want to talk about them. I'm going to give you some examples, maybe from other fields, if you will, but try to set a foundation uh, for, I think, the discussion that you're going to hear and, and think about. I'm going to talk about the power of branding. I'm going to talk about brand value and intangibles, the importance of credibility, and then also engaging consumers and customers in, in the right way. So next slide. So is this, I'm sorry, is this clicker working? Is this work? Is this working? The clicker, is it working? Yeah, let's try it again. It's not working. Yeah, yeah, I, I get the protect. So, okay, sorry. So, uh, so let me let me start let me start off with because um, uh, I know these slides actually. Um, so, uh, so let me start. Off. I'm going to talk about what brands do, and brands basically are really important. Thanks. Yeah, it's maybe something. Okay, we're going to try this. Okay, now this is supposed to work too, though, right? Green button. Is it? Maybe we're. Do I have to point it? I was pointing it back there. No? Okay, there's a switch. We're going to flip a switch. Watch this. A switch will be flipped and my slides will work. Okay, it's, uh, I'm not an engineer, but I, I think that's how it works. But the main thing with brands is, is um, it, their, their importance is what they do. Okay, now I don't have a clicker. <laughs> he took the clicker. <laughs> All right, what brands do, they're a way to create awareness and in, in, uh, image. Um, and it's about differentiation. It's basically... The essence of branding is, is creating differences, and that's true in any brand, and having meaning and, um, uh, and, and making sure that people know what you stand for, what you do, all those kinds of things. There we go. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, we're back in business. Okay. And the main thing is to avoid the commodity trap, which is a big problem in a lot of industries um, where you're basically competing on price, and that's a tough, tough game to play. So by having brands, it gives you the opportunities to reap the benefits of branding, but it's what you do with them is the important thing, and that's what I want to talk about. So the one thing I think it's important in energy branding for any organization, any firm, is to appreciate the power of brands and what they can do. So it's a promise. A brand is a promise. It's a way to set expectations. It's a way to reduce risk. That's what customers seek. So that's fundamentally the role of brands. The power of a brand resides in the minds and hearts of customers. It's what they think and what they feel. So ultimately, all the things you do, all the kinds of, of, of things you do for customer services and experiences, it, it all resides in the minds and the hearts of your customers. And at the heart of, great brand, of a great brand are great products and services. And you, and you always want to keep that in mind. You can talk about lots of things about branding, 
it all, to me, the most important thing is, do I have great products and great services? Every brand contact matters, though. No matter what I hear about a brand can affect what I think and feel and therefore have implications for how I act with respect to that brand. Really, really important, a strong brand improves your marketing effectiveness and efficiency. So if your brand does have that meaning in the heads and the hearts of your customers, it changes how they respond. It changes what you can do and how easily you can do that. There's an internal side. It's easier to attract. It's easier to retain your employees, which these days in, in the, you know, the talent competition that we face in the world, um, it's very, very important. It can provide a buffer and cushion in the court of public opinion. And I've seen this many times. So having a strong reputation as a brand will help you if there is a crisis or any sort of downturn in terms of recovery. So you add all that up and then basically what it says, because of what brands do, all the advantages it gives you, it's one of your most valuable intangible assets. And you see that every time there's a merger or acquisition and you look at the price that's paid for a company, it's the intangible assets that are often a big part of that and a big part of that can be the brand. So managing that is really, really critical. And that's what I'm going to talk about. My other four keys focus more in the management part, but I want to start with this one because branding is new in the energy industry. You know, you don't, this is something that marketing's been, uh, something that's been introduced for quite a while now, but the actual notion of brands and branding is relatively new as reflected by the fact that this is the first conference. So, th so the second thing I want to talk about is the importance of value. And this is so critical is to understand and put forth the most compelling value proposition so that your customers appreciate the value you create. And the key to value is it's all the benefits and all the costs, tangible and intangible, associated with the consumer purchasing, consuming in the case of energy. It's that, it, it's that stream of benefits and costs that are associated with energy. They're economic, functional, psych psychological. It involves time, energy, all those other kinds of things. So that, that understanding that value proposition is really key because it's, you don't want to be a commodity. Part of being a commodity is creating value so that you're actually creating lots of benefits um, to be associated with any costs that you might have. So being seen as low priced or inexpensive is not necessarily the answer. And we've seen that in many categories. Because if I can come up with a value proposition where I give people good value because they get more than what they think they give, that's the most important thing you can do. And my best example, like I said, I'm going to use examples from all different places. But to me, one of the more fascinating marketing branding stories of the last 15 years is the rise of Samsung. And their ability to overtake Sony and consumer electronics, their ability to threaten Apple in, in smartphones is, is incredible. But it comes down to their value. Pro they have a great value proposition. It's about quality. It's about design, how a product works, looks, and feels. At, 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 at least traditionally or historically, I should say, initially, at a more affordable price. It was a great value proposition. Hyundai is trying to do the same thing to Toyota. And with, with surprising success, reason why, value proposition matters. So value matters. If you can create great value, however that is. And obviously in energy, that's going to be different. You have to think about the different ways that you can create value for customers in terms of all the different kinds of benefits that might come into play. So framing value is really, really important. Making sure people appreciate and this is one of the biggest challenges, and I think energy especially, because it is so intangible. It's not something that is easily defined, but you want to think about that. How do I bring the costs and benefits to life? Making sure that you put your best foot forward. Understand how customers hear, hear you in terms of how they understand your value proposition and how they think. And real simple example, I know it's, it's far afield from energy, but the concept and the principle applies. So Procter & Gamble for years has dealt with this. They have always are thinking about how to frame value because they're more premium priced than their competitors. So take Pantene, which is one of their shampoo products, competes with a brand called Suave in certain markets, including North America. 
So maybe it costs a dollar fifty more, okay? That's a lot. Of, maybe to some people, tight economic times, that may be a lot. Well, what if you frame it as, look, that's not a dollar fifty. You're going to get 72 washes per bottle. It's about two cents per wash to actually get a much better shampoo. Isn't it worth two cents? So they frame it in a way so that the value becomes clearer. So that's the notion. It's going to vary by industry, going to vary by market, and the energy space, making sure people appreciate the value. Because my guess is that's one of the hurdles that many firms have. They're probably providing a lot of energy firms, provide a lot of value consumers don't truly appreciate. Uh, the next key is establishing corporate credibility. And this is, I think, one of the most important concepts for corporate brands, which most energy brands are. And to be credible, you're seen as expert, trustworthy, and likable. You're good at what you do. You have your customers' interests in mind. And I also just like dealing with you. You're interesting, you're uh, dynamic, you know, the different characteristics. That, you know, finding a corporate brand that has that reputation is actually pretty hard. Um, you don't normally see all three dimensions. All three are really important. All three are really powerful. So having corporate credibility can be really, really key. So at one time I was in California, PG&E, I, I saw some research that they did. And one of the challenges PG&E had in California, and this is some quotes from the corporate research. You know, they're nice quotes, but they're basically saying, look, the person's good, they're solid, but maybe they're a little distant, not someone I can connect with. That's an issue. I mean, if you're trying to build a relationship with customers, then you want to make sure that you have the perceptions of expertise and trust, but also that likability kind of perceptions that they, can, they feel somewhat uh, closer. And the other thing about credibility, and the research again shows, is actions speak louder than words. So it's what you do, not what you say, that really, really matters. So customers these days, are in a, in, and especially, I think, younger consumers, are especially, are especially sensitive to what exactly are you doing. This is an old campaign in the oil industry, but it's one that always, I've always remembered because it was Chevron, and they had this People Do campaign. And it was about their environmental programs and the specific actions they did. And I was just really struck by how successful it was overcoming you know, the negative perceptions oil companies have because they made it concrete what they did, even though what they did wasn't necessarily a huge amount, but it was showing that they really did you know, care and were trying to do things. Uh, innovation is magic. That's, I just, you know, it's sort of obvious, but I want to make it clear the research that I've done shows how if I'm an innovative company, I'm seen as not only am I seen as expert, I'm seen as trustworthy because I obviously have to figure out you know, what, you, what kinds of things people are, are, are need and want. And I'm also seen as likable because I'm interesting. So today's digital world especially, you know, coming up with really relevant, new and improved products and services in the energy space can be, I think can get great rewards. Next key is brand intangibles. And this is the realistic, the, the, uh, sorry, the... Uh, the, the, the sort of more holistic view, the, the realization that it's a lot of things that affect people's perceptions of a brand. And you're not just selling a product, you're, you're satisfying needs, unmet needs, you're delivering some desired benefits, you're creating really rewarding experiences. So, so that's the way to think about it. And when you think about it that way, that suggests all different kinds of products that you may not be selling because you're really, really trying to create an experience satisfying need, especially in the energy space. I think there's all kinds of applications there. So a much more holistic view. Um, emotions matter. I mean, that's one of the intangibles are emotions and they come in all forms. Some are more experiential, some are more enduring and longer term. Um, they're most powerful, and I've seen this in many, many uh, instances, when they're linked to actual products and service experiences. So it's the fact that the emotions are sort of a natural from what you do, you're actually then tapping into emotions that come from that. And I think that's an important uh, realization again. And the, and the last thing about the emotions is, to me, I think, and especially in the energy space, there's a lot of opportunities to be thinking about, and there's so much interest in the green marketing, more environmental, and in in the corporate social responsibility, specific cause programs. 
one of the things that I've studied and shown is there's so many benefits you get from being seen as, as having uh, socially responsible and, and cost, successful cost programs. And they're listed up there. So I won't go through them all. But the, there's a lot of benefits. And I think people don't always fully appreciate how many different ones there are when you're um, in this area doing things. There's a lot of benefits you can get from that. Okay, so I, uh, I'm... Um, probably running over in time, so I want to I wrap up with my last key, and that's about engaging customers. So I've talked a lot. I talked about the power of brands and value and the role of intangibles and credibility. So the last piece I want to talk about is, and it's going to be the next panel, is going to talk about customers and the energy consumer, how to properly engage them. Um, and, and, and part of this is recognizing that I can do so many things now in a digital world I can never do before and I can personalize things. I can have a public voice and presence online. There's so many ways I can now monitor and get feedback and dialogue and get input from customers and advice. And so it's really, really amazing. That, says, that said, remember that not all customers are going to want to be engaged. They're not all going to engage in social media. It's not all about going on Facebook and Twitter. Only some of the consumers with some of the brands, some of the time. And one of the things I've done is I've created this, what I call brand engagement pyramid, which sort of highlights that because it says, look, I have to recognize I've got some customers at the top of the pyramid where this pyramid reflects engagement who want to be really engaged. And I want to think about how to market to them. But I can't do the same marketing for those at the base of the pyramid who are not as engaged. They're not going to be following my social media. I'm going to have to be doing other things. So I really want to think through and understand the flows and the influence and how things cut across different groups. I want to think about how I reach them directly. I want to think about all those non-brand influences. So I'm going to be thinking about all kinds of earned media that I get and everything else. But it's about how to market and who to market. I've got it. So this is a little schematic I use to try to make, remind people that they're, they're reaching different uh, levels of engagement. So you really have to understand that structure and dynamics, the shape of the pyramid, the flow of information, the trickle-down effect, um, and that's going to really change what you do. So with high engagement, I might do all kinds of stuff on social media, whereas with much lower engagement, I'm going to have to be doing a lot more traditional advertising, some other kinds of things as a result. All right, so let me wrap up. Um, uh, so brands, to, most, I think what your most important assets is the brand. <clears throat> for all that it does in the marketplace, for all that it does with consumers. So it creates differentiation and meaning, but you got to manage them properly to reap the benefits. So, so what I tried to show you is, and, and again, I think throughout the conference, people are going to build on this and go way beyond what I'm, what I'm saying now. But the, these five keys, that brand success is about recognizing the power of branding within an organization, to appreciate it, to make sure you're delivering and communicating value and understanding what that is, is part of that, creating brand intangibles, which include corporate credibility, and then properly engaging customers. So great. Thanks for uh, your, your time, for listening, and I'm going to hand it back to Jim. Thank you very much. Terrific.